Welcome to Bible Tract Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracts Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracts, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracts Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracts and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. How do you do, my friend? Welcome to the broadcast today, the very last day of 2018. I pray that it has been a good year for you, that you can look back and say, here is what God has been doing in my life. You'll probably, like I do, look back and say, oh, I stumbled there. I didn't do well there. But then here is the grace of God. Here's what he did when I confessed my sin and how God really helped make the year a blessing in spite of me, but to God's glory and God's truth. It was active in my life. I hope you have that kind of a testimony. If you don't, well, let's plan for this coming year to be that year. This may be the year the Lord comes. Amen. Well, right now, my Bible sits open to the Old Testament book of Ruth, Ruth and chapter one. Can you get your Bible and join me there? Ruth and chapter one. I've got a gospel tract in my hand. So right now, if you can, along with getting your own Bible open to Ruth and chapter one, get something on which you can jot some notes and join. Join me for these 15 minutes as we study the Word of God and we challenge one another to be gospel tellers. And that's why I want to get to talking about those gospel tracts here in just a moment. But let me lead into our Bible study and our study of Ruth this way. How is your walk of faith? How's your walk of faith? Now, for most of us, that's one of those, well, hard to answer questions. Now, all of us struggle to know just how to measure our faith. I think, though, that that's why God gave to us so many Bible stories of people who lived their real life situations out in the scriptures. Some of them go through them with strong faith, some with weak faith, some, well, some just crash and burn. All of us who love Christ want to have a strong faith. We want to have a solid faith in the person and truth of God so that we can go through whatever situation may come with our eyes and our hearts firmly fixed on Christ. Now, as I said, with my Bible open to Ruth chapter 1, I'm going to have the opportunity to see two key people, both with strong faith. One of them is this lady, Ruth. She's a childless widow. She's a Gentile. She's a very poor woman with no prospects economically. She is under the stigma of being a Moabitess as she moves into a totally Jewish territory. The only thing going for her is this. She has her faith in the true and living God, in the God who blesses those that trust him. Get your Bible and get something with which you can take notes, please. Now, I mentioned a gospel tract here a moment ago. A gospel tract is an evangelism tool. It's a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. And I want to give you some gospel tracts free of charge. At the end of the program, my announcer will make known to you three ways by which you can give to us your name and your mailing address. If you do that, that free sample packet will go out to you normally in the very next business day. One of the tracks that's in that sample pack of about 40 tracks is this one. It's called A Would-Be Suicide. A Would-Be Suicide. You say, Pastor Mark, that sounds like a terrible title. It may to you, but you have no clue how many people in just the United States of America are contemplating suicide each day and every day. This track has been used in a powerful way. A would-be suicide. It's a true story of a man ready to commit suicide, having his last meal with his revolver with him in the restaurant when he watches a 16-year-old girl do something that alters his mind and alter his thoughts. He goes and talks to her, and a 16-year-old talks to an adult man, and she brings his life to Christ. What a great story because of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Please, just one of the tracks in that sample packet. Let's you and I become partners together, please. 
contact us, you can go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org, and you can order that sample packet there online. All right, with your Bible open, just the first verse of Ruth. Ruth chapter 1, verse 1 says this, Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land, and a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab, he and his wife and his two sons. Please stop right there. Now, when I come to uh, study a new book of the Bible for me, I try to find a working title for the book, and I have a working title for this study in Ruth. That title is this, Faith Finds Rest in Ruin. Faith finds rest in ruin. You're going to find out why that word rest is so key as we study our way through the book. Now, if you are familiar at all with the story of Ruth and you know about the ruin I'm talking about, Ruth finds herself in chapter one as a young widow. She's connected to two other widows. One of these is her mother-in-law named Naomi. All three women find themselves in a really hopeless state. They are in ruin. All three are required to take a bold step. But the step they're going to take or the decision, that's what I mean by step, the step or decision is going to have consequences. Well, friend, decisions always do, not just in Bible time, but in our time. Two of the women will make a step of faith in the true and living God, Jehovah. One is going to put her faith and her own wisdom in, in the wisdom of the society in which she's living. Now, I'm going to teach through the book of Ruth over the next weeks, and here's why. As a follower of Jesus Christ, I personally need my own personal faith to be strengthened. In the 30 years that I was a pastor, I had my faith strengthened far more through the lives of lay folk, you know, normal people. I was strengthened far more by them than through my pastor friends. You see, I got to see these real folk living out their real lives week by week as we worship together and serve Christ together. Verse 1 of the book of Ruth tells us a whole lot about the time in which great faith can be found. It was in the time when Israel was ruled by the judges. If your Bible's open, look there at the very last verse of the book of Judges, Judges 21, 25. Here's what it says. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. Well, the decision to live by their own human wisdom kept the nation of Israel in a cycle of war, paying tribute and taxes to foreign powers, and seeing their children worship false gods. That stinks. You do remember Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, don't you? I hope it's well known to you. Those verses, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 say, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not unto thine own understanding, and all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. For many of us who are preachers, we think of that text as a great preaching text. But for those lay folk I mentioned a moment ago, for those believers who are in normal lives, th those lives that strengthen my life, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 was how they survived their life. It was the backbone of their walk of faith, a genuine, strong walk, even during ruinous times. And yes, I've seen some of the people in the churches I pastored go through some pretty ruinous times. Years ago, many years ago, now a very well-known preacher at the time, his title for Ruth chapter 1 was this, What's a nice Jewish family like yours doing in a place like this? You like that? Let me give it again. What's a nice Jewish family like yours doing in a place like this? You see, they were a Jewish family, but they left Jewish territory. My own personal title for chapter one is this, Damaged Woman. My personal title for chapter one is A Damaged Woman. Verses 1 through 5 is the first paragraph of the story. Chapter 1 has in total three paragraphs. Here's my outline for the chapter. 
paragraph number one, verses one through five, I entitle, Wreckage Described. Notice the W word and the D word, wreckage described. Here we find a family in wreckage. Why? Because they're out of the will of God. They're living in a place they're not supposed to live. Let me just give you a quick takeaway lesson from the story here and from this book, even before we get into the details. Here's the lesson. If you too get out of the will of God, you can also kill a family. You like that? Isn't that encouraging? If you and I get out of the will of God, we too can kill our family because some family members here are going to be killed. Paragraph number two is verses six through 18. My title, Women Decide. Women Decide. Here is where we're going to see each of those three women make a step, make a decision, either a step of faith in God or faith in their own understanding. Paragraph number three is verses 19 to 22. My title, Walk in Disgrace. You, you heard me. Walk in Disgrace disgrace, but we'll get to that. Chapter one of the book of Ruth begins and it ends at the same geographic location, that is Bethlehem. That city's original name was Ephrath, meaning fruitful. But after the conquest of the promised land, it was changed to Bethlehem, which means house of bread. But it was not known for much, except that was the area in which the Bible character Rachel died. It was not a well-known place. Oh, oh, you and I, you and I know it's famous because it's the hometown of King David and it's the birthplace of Jesus. But it's only became famous because a Gentile, childless widow with no hope and in poverty had enough faith to trust God. She walked into Bethlehem under the shadow of public shame and stigma, she was a Moabite woman. But this Moabite woman had fixed her eyes, had fixed her trust in the God of truth, the God of grace, and the God that blesses those that trust him. And because of her faith, God, yes, blessed her, and her blessing in turn caused the status of the whole town to be altered." That just makes me stop and have to ask myself a question here. I wonder, is my faith as a believer in Jesus Christ right now in this stage of my life, is my faith having an impact on my own town? Friend, is your faith altering your town? Now, before you and I answer that question, we better stop and ask ourselves, well, how in the world did Ruth's faith change Bethlehem. And we'll find that out as we walk through the book. Friend, you may be coming here today and you're listening, and perhaps you have some foggy idea about the story of Ruth, and you've heard me talk about faith. You've heard that term before. It's one of those words in religious circles that gets used a lot. Faith is where you take the the weight of the eternity off of what you can do and you place it onto what God can do. You put your hope of eternity on the person and the work of Jesus Christ. It begins with a step of faith to receive Jesus as your Savior. If you've not done that, please do it now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Track Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracks, you can contact us by calling 309 309- 828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website, Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.